Matthew, as the flooding of Hurricane Helene recedes, it left it behind a canvas of loss and devastation across the entire region. These pictures right here on your screen were captured by Matt Henson of Asheville. Uh, he's a photographer up there and a resident. Matt joins us now by the phone. And Matt, you took these images right here on a very scary time. How did you guys fare during the entire storm? Um, I actually was able to get out of my place pretty easily. I was fortunate to have some lineman crews actually staying in Airbnb next to my house. That's and so Thursday or Friday when things kind of subsided, I was able to just kind of hop on with those guys, uh, work behind them as they cut and drag trees and just do whatever I could to get out. Um, and uh, fortunately, you know, my home isn't totally devastated. But, you know, I had some water damage, and we're still kind of assessing things and seeing if it's going to be uh, a long-term livable or not. But uh, I didn't, you know, my things weren't destroyed. I was I was very fortunate compared to a lot of people uh, over here in this area right now. But it's been it's been tough to see some of this stuff. Well, we're looking at your photos right here, Matt. And how long have you lived in Asheville? Uh, I was born and raised in Asheville. I've lived there 35 years. Um, and I have, I have never, ever seen this kind of, of devastation in this area. I didn't think it was possible. I mean, have you, you've obviously seen the pictures that you've taken. What, run me through the gamut of emotions between it happening just afterwards and now. Uh, well, it happening, it was, it was so scary leading up to it because a lot of people don't know Thursday we had some kind of Gulf rainstorm run through, and we got a lot of rain Thursday, and so we were already having concerns with leaks, and dam issues and flooding, small flooding. Um, and so Friday morning I woke up at about 4 o'clock and I thought, you know, we had gone to war on the East Coast. I mean, the wind was crazy. I have a lot of trees around my house, so huge branches are falling. They're hitting the home. Um, trees falling next door. My neighbors lost some cars. And, and so you sit there. You don't really want to go out. Obviously, you can't go outside. We had 60-mile-an-hour wind gusts here, and, I mean, it was just – it was hard. You had to sit inside, kind of hunker down, just hope nothing comes falling through your house. I mean, that was the scariest part is from 4 a.m. to 7. You don't really have a lot of daylight. You have no idea. You're just kind of hoping a tree doesn't come down on your home or, or something like that. And then, you know, the aftermath, obviously going out, you walk around the neighborhood, and it was just like, like what in the world happened here? Like right. this, this doesn't look like the place I was at yesterday when I came home and I went to bed. And so... Uh, you know, spent the early part of the morning just walking around my neighborhood. Obviously, I live kind of you know, out in a rural area mm -hmm. in Fairview, North Carolina. And so it was, you know, immediately my first thought was both ways in and out of my house are blocked by probably 20 to 30 trees in each direction. You've got power lines on the road. Nobody knows if they're on or if they're off, mm -hmm. um, if they're dangerous or not. And so you're trying to evaluate the damage, not get yourself hurt. Um, and then once I got out and I start to really see the damage just along my street mm -hmm. um, and then getting into Asheville um, and not having cell phone service, that's, that's, that was the craziest part is you get up, this, this, this thing is happening outside. The cell phones went down at about 6 a.m. And so from 6 a.m. on, there is no coordination for recovery or getting out. Everybody was on their own. You couldn't call. You couldn't text. The radio stations were down. It was a total, that was the scariest part. It was total blackout. Oh, my gosh. And if you couldn't see somebody or walk up and physically speak to them, you had no idea how they were doing, if they were alive, if they were okay. Um, and that was the scariest part was, you know, I have a, a young daughter that lives about 20 minutes away, and I immediately had no way to get in touch with her. Every route to her once I got out was flooded. And so I'm trying to find ways to get people, to, you know, hey, can you go find out if they're okay, if they're good? Uh, we eventually made contact once we started to get the cell phone service, but it was a solid 24 hours. Mm -hmm. uh, no cell phone service. Uh, I got lucky and found a Wi-Fi access point really late in the day on Friday. I worked for one of the local radio stations, mm -hmm. and a restaurant next door just randomly happened to have Wi-Fi that functioned, and so I was able to start getting stuff out Friday and contact people. Um, but really only 1% of us had access to Wi-Fi, and it was there were 50 people huddled up in this little restaurant wow. patio, patio, just doing whatever we could to make phone calls and and start sending messages out because for 24 hours it was like Western North Carolina didn't exist on the internet. Right, right. I there mean, was I, no phone calls, nothing. No. I mean, it, it's so hard, I and mean, you can't communicate with anybody either. So now they've got some cellular service back. What have you been doing for the last couple of days, Matt? Uh, I've just been walking around and trying to, you know, document 
the, the devastation because, again, really only about 20% of Western North Carolina has cell phone service. You guys are only seeing the stuff from, like, really central downtown Asheville area and close by. Mm -hmm. We don't know what's going on in, in Bryson City and Murphy and Highlands and those kind of places because they don't have service. Mm -hmm. So we're only hearing about the devastation from the people who can share it so far. There are probably another three to 400, 500,000 people that – haven't gotten internet access or cell phone service yet, and so we have no idea what the farther west part of the state looks like right now. It's it's still we're still only seeing like twenty percent of what actually happened. Yeah, yeah, that's such a good point. I'm not seeing any pictures out from Bryson City right there. We know we've got the uh, railroad that goes right there. It's a popular uh, tourist mm -hmm. destination. I've not seen anything from there either. Matt, I appreciate you taking time out and talking to Fox Weather. We know it's been a very difficult stretch. Uh, I'm sorry this happened to you for sure, and uh, I'd like to check back in with you again um, when everything is up and going again and you guys are back up on your feet just to see how everything is. Matt, thank you so would much. Love, would love that. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for joining us.